total membership that they have today, that is uh, active Jehovah's Witnesses, around 3 million persons. So we have sort of a revolving door situation going on there. Now, people are leaving because of a whole variety of reasons. Of the million, of course, some have been disfellowshipped for a whole variety of reasons. But many, many, many are dissidents, individuals who recognize that the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society is not all that it claims. It, they've examined very closely this whole appointment business uh, in 1918, 1919, and they see that that is an absolute sham and a joke. And we haven't got time to go into that here, of course, but uh, the so-called appointment of them as God's organization, his, his uh, uh, specific group of people uh, here in this time period that we're in, the doctrinal changes, the uh, false prophecies, 100 years of false prophecies, having suffered three major gate failures and a whole bunch of minor gate failures, we see that, um, that uh, this is growing in actual fact. And as I think about that, it, call, it calls to mind an area that really does concern me. Number one, we know that the Jehovah's Witness, the act of Jehovah's Witness, the person that's in the congregations, fine people, many of them, many of them, just absolutely fine persons, deluded, yes, but fine individuals that are suffering these conditions we're talking about. Uh, I think of those persons, but I think also about that million because although our files are full, Marjorie and I, our files are full of letters from individuals that have left, they're in a burned out state, they're almost anti-religious, they want nothing to do with religion, they, uh, many of them, these letters that make you cry, are suffering severe mental depression and emotional distress. That's the question now that comes to my mind. Uh, it's easy for us to sit here in the comfort of this home and discuss these things, uh, the problems, uh, some of the causes, we certainly haven't gone into all of the causes and some of the problems that uh, witnesses have. But what do we do, what do we do as persons who are concerned about, who are interested in Jehovah's Witnesses? We're not looking at them in some clinical overview, uh, disinterested with them, in them as persons, but looking at them in some sociological overview. We are interested in those persons as individuals. What can we do as, yes, individuals? What can we do to share with persons who want to help these people? Uh, I know your book, for example, uh, which we have not really had opportunity to discuss at length here, goes into cases that, that exceed by, by a number of uh, uh, readings, if you want to call it what we've talked about here today, but it also goes into some very fine areas of helping these persons. What can we do to help these persons? And I think we should really try to address that for a moment or two before we conclude this, uh, this afternoon's uh, interview. The question of what we can do to help those who leave is, of course, a very important question, especially since so many do leave, and many do have problems, but of course, many do eventually adjust to leaving, and it's very difficult at first. I think, first of all, we need to understand how difficult it is to leave the Watchtower Society. It's not a ordinary religion, so to speak. It's a religion that encompasses your whole being. Your friends are typically witnesses. You're strongly discouraged from associating with any non-witness. Your whole life revolves around the witnesses. Your whole life revolves around the eminence of Armageddon. It's your whole being. And so when you leave the witnesses, basically your whole support system is taken away. Your, your whole reason for living in many ways is taken away. Your whole modus operandi is taken away. So it is extremely traumatic because you're losing so much. You're losing your belief structure, your friends, many times your business, your career, etc. So we have to realize, first of all, it is extremely traumatic. And to help a person adjust to leaving, I think the most important thing we can do is try to replace as much as they lost. For example, you lose your friends. So to deal with that, you need new friends which is not easy because for a long time you feel the only people you should associate with are witnesses and you look down immensely on non-witnesses. You feel witnesses are good people, non-witnesses are all bad people and therefore it's hard to develop new friends among non-witnesses but in time most people do. In many large cities there are witness support groups so when you leave these people will help you find new friends they will help you reestablish your place in society. They will help you readjust your thinking so you no longer hate the things that witnesses are taught to hate, such as all other religions. They help you see that 
there are some people who go to other churches who are not evil people, as the witnesses strongly imply. So it's a very slow process, and it's a very difficult process. But most people that I have talked to, five or ten years later, after they have left the witnesses, state they didn't know why they didn't leave sooner. They should have left five years ago. If I would have known what I know today, there's no way I would have stayed as long as I, I did. Many look upon it as wasted 10 or 20 years. Many people feel, well, it's a stage of my life. I, I spent 20 years in the witnesses and I regret it, but this is what I did and I can't take back those years now, so therefore all I can do is make the best of where I am now. So it's not easy, but it can be done. But it's interesting that extremely few, pe few people, once they leave, extremely few go back to the society, which I think says something. As a matter of fact, those who have left for more than five years, it's almost one out of a thousand that return. So it's extremely few. And of those that return, many of them again leave, which says, I think, that in the long run, once they've readjusted, they have no desire to return. Yes, Jerry, in, in deference, you know, to the thousands upon thousands of uh, individuals that leave the Watchtower Bottom Track Society, and come out, they were very, very balanced individuals in there, and they come out as balanced individuals. Nevertheless, some of them theologically a little mixed up, of course, and, and so forth. Uh, I have an expression that uh, you can take persons out of the Watchtower, but sometimes it's uh, rather difficult to take the Watchtower out of persons. I'm amazed. Uh, how many individuals will carry this uh, watchtower cobwebs almost in their mind for many, many, many years. Uh, some of them even suffering from um, a measure of guilt that maybe, maybe that, you know, they, they overstepped themselves. Perhaps they, they really have left God's organization, questions and so on. But gradually, and I think that's where Christians have to be extremely patient with the individual that leaves the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. I think we all walk our road to Damascus at uh, various speeds. I think some run to Damascus, some stride, and some crawl on their hands and knees. And I think we have to give them an awful lot of love and empathy and, and encourage them to, to look at biblical Christianity, uh, study the scriptures, and, and understand that uh, their salvation is by grace, and that they might abandon any of these hang-ups they might have on a, on a works orientation and uh, legalism and so on, and some of these things that will, will stay in their character almost from the years and years and years of indoctrination. I think the more we can do to encourage them to relax and, and enjoy the scriptures and read the scriptures and study the commentaries and so forth and come to a, a relaxed understanding of the love, actually, that uh, God has for mankind as manifested through His Son, Jesus Christ. And uh, that direction, too, that encouragement, without being oppressive uh, to them, but rather leading them gently and lovingly, to uh, examine these things and reevaluate some of the things that they, they might still be carrying with them from the past and uh, look at it with a fresh, uh, clean outlook. And I think this, because I've seen it happen, I see some marvelously well put together Christian individuals, uh, healthy, mentally healthy, and uh, the family in order and so forth. Individuals that left the Watchtower, Bible and Tract Society, you would never guess that they'd even ever had that experience. Yeah, that's true. I've seen many, too, likewise, who have adjusted quite well, I think, to leaving. And, uh, but it's difficult, and I guess my professional background and my orientation has not been spending a great deal of time with those who are well-adjusted, but spending a great deal of time with those who are not well-adjusted. So I guess my experience is, is more with those who are having problems, and so thus I'm far more aware of the concerns here. And this, I guess, is true with many of us. And as you mentioned, I think it's a good point. We do have to be very patient because some of these people, it takes years and years to get the watchtower out of them, so to speak. Many people who were witnesses 20 years ago still adhere to many of the watchtower ideas because I think it's like cleaning out a house. You generally don't take everything out and burn it and replace it. You destroy those that you see need replacing. You you get rid of a piece of furniture that's broken, that you see it's broken, and you replace it. So like, likewise with Watchtower ideas, you get rid of those you see a need to replace. And if you don't see a need to replace it, it sits there. And so I think in helping those who were witnesses, we need to help them understand or help them see 
what needs to be replaced, which is not always easy because, of course, many of the Westall ideas are certainly very good. Their emphasis on clean living, their emphasis on uh, the importance of the family. They, of course, don't always live up to this, but they do emphasize these things. So there is a lot of positive things that the Westall emphasizes. If it was all negative, it wouldn't attract anyone. I think the reason the Westall has grown so much is because there is a lot of positive there. It's like the honey with the poison in it. People generally don't eat poison by itself. You've got to put poison in something good. And I think the same thing is true with the Rostauer Society. And so cleaning out this stuff is not easy. It's very difficult. It's very hard to separate the arsenic from the honey. And that's why people stay so long, I think. People stay years after they see clearly that there are things wrong, after one prophetic date failed after another. I talked with a man who was a witness for about 80 years. And I said, now you've lived through six or seven prophetic dates that failed. You saw 1925. You, you knew that they predicted, oh yes, they clearly predicted 25, 1925. That's when Armageddon would be here. Very, very clear. And yet you stayed. He stayed until after 1975, and then he left. So I asked him, why? Why did you stay for so long after you saw so clearly that what they taught was wrong? He said, well, there was so much to hold me. He said, there was so much good that I couldn't leave. The bad had to become so great before I left, and it did. 1975 was, for him, the last straw, so to speak. But when he did finally leave, I believe he was in his 80s. So it took a lot for him to leave. And for many of us, it takes an awful lot because there is so much holding power that the Wastower Society has. And this is what outsiders don't see. They see only the bad. They don't tend to see the tremendous holding power that the society has upon us. Well, it's clear to me, Jerry, that uh, the experiences that I had and that you had also uh, as elders and the cases that we were involved with on the congregation and at the congregation level is far, far greater and far wider than the average Jehovah's Witness uh, would begin to imagine. I agree very much so, and I think it's hard for us to sit here really and, and even begin to relate the tragedy and the suffering of so many, many, many people that were involved in what you might call the snare of the watchtower. And I just, the past few minutes, have been thinking about the many, many cases I've worked with in the past 10 years and the incredible, untold human suffering of so many, many people whose lives were just simply ruined or at least damaged so much for so long of a period. And it's, I think, the Jehovah's Witnesses are one of the tragedies of this 20th century. And there are just so many problems that they have produced and have wrought, which have carried us right into the, the, the time period of today. And it, there needs to be, I think, more awareness of what's going on, more awareness of, of what they have done to so many people. We're aware of Jonestown very well, but I don't think many people are aware of, of the untold tragedy that the witnesses have produced in our time period today. And people need to be aware of this so they can respond to it. And hopefully our discussion here will help a few people become more aware of this uh, heinous, clearly heinous situation. On that note, it's incumbent upon all of us, those of us that might come into contact with Jehovah's Witnesses, those persons who are in the Watchtower Society in good standing, those individuals that have left the organization, it really is our responsibility to look at them in love and empathy, reach out to them in compassion, because these persons have experienced some very, very unusual circumstances in their lives. They've come out of a hermetically sealed society. They are part of a, an organization that is oppressive, that is very demanding. Legalistic, yes, and works-oriented. All of the things we've discussed today can result in the breakdown of many individuals, nervous breakdown, mental illness, emotional distress, these things we've talked about. So I think as Christian persons, we should find it within our hearts to look upon these persons really as victims.